Okay, so here's the board by itself. And I've been trying to figure out exactly how to record this. I've um, already retried many times. I've done many retakes. But I'm going to give this a try. So first I want to look at the overall layout of the board and what all the components are. Now I can't show everything, and I'm, I don't know everything about it, but it's helpful to have a basic overall view of what, what's going on here. There's a lot going on here. And this is a multifunction board. And it's, I suspect that also some of the components here are shared, depending on what mode the circuit is operating in. So let's just go over, uh, I think I'm going to try using the zoom. So we'll see how this works. I'm going to try different techniques and try to get the best footage I can. And I'm hoping that I can improve, later on improve the quality of the footage. But we'll just get by here for now. Okay, so here's an overview of the board. And I'm going to use something to point with. So right here, I'm going to use a pointing device to try to keep my hand out of the footage. So I'm going to use a screwdriver here. So, yeah, that's not very good. Let's try something else. Let's try uh, this marker here. So right here, that's the AC input. It's an IC uh, AC input. And this is used to charge the solar generator from AC power. Now, I don't use these hardly ever because honestly, a solar generator should be charged by solar, right? It's almost like defiling it to put AC mains power into it. So I don't even use this. In fact, I don't know if I've ever even tested it. And right behind it, you can see some various AC components. You have filtering and uh, chokes and stuff, I'm guessing is what this is. And I, I haven't identified everything here. This is NTC on us, so this is probably negative temperature coefficient. So this is some kind of, uh, probably to prevent inrush current. It could be all kind of things. I haven't really looked too hard at this area because I'm not too concerned about it, to be honest with you. I'm never going to use this port. Um, but I'm just trying to include it for just general knowledge. Right here, you have a heat sink. And you have four large MOS, I'm guessing they're MOSFETs or, um, there's, there's different kinds of switches that could be there. I'm just going to pretend they're MOSFETs, assume they're MOSFETs. There's other things that, uh, we can go into that, but they're underneath these silicon boots for insulation. That's to keep them from uh, making contact with a heat sink. And I do, I'm very sure that these are good. And over here you have, uh, let's go to the left side of the board, which is over, over here. And I'm going to try to lift the board up without shocking myself. Hopefully there's not a charge in these caps. So here are the lugs that the large battery wires were attached to right here. And this is, uh, let's see which one this is. This is the negative. This is the positive. There's where the fuses were and there's my fuse I put in. And I believe these are input caps. So these would be your bolt caps for the 12 volt input. This is a transformer, which is it's actually used to uh, take the low voltage DC and it's fed into this transformer. And if you look here, there's a whole bunch of MOSFETs and or diodes, quite a few of them. You can see them all lined up there. The white stuff is heat sink compound. It increases the thermal transfer between each of these MOSFETs and this heat sink. And if you look at that one there, you can see a problem. It's actually got a gap. So it's not seated properly on the heat sink and there's a gap there and that's very bad. Of course, the way I run this thing, it probably doesn't matter. But if you're putting 300 watts out, yeah, it would matter. Now I can't see if that's a diode or a MOSFET, but these are t called TO220 packages, I believe, or there's something like that. Very, very common. I mean, you'll see these in everything. Very, very common package size. So somewhere on here, these MOSFETs take the 12 volts and they put it across alternately the taps, the primary taps of this transformer. It does that very, very rapidly, and it generates what you could consider to be AC. It's not necessarily going to be a sinus, sinusoidal wave. Uh, it's just going to be more or less alternating current, and it comes out the other side of this transformer as high voltage AC, probably two or 300 volts or something like that. Or, or it could be, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's a high voltage AC, and that's then fed into these things here which is a, uh, this is a bridge rectifier, I believe is what that is. It's four diodes arranged in a, a full wave bridge rectifier. And some of the stuff would just be, you know, this is electronics knowledge. You can sort of just look it up and learn about it. And I, I don't claim to know everything, but there isn't room in this video to go on and on, but I'm just trying to do a quick overview here. And then the high voltage DC, which comes out of this, the, this bridge rectifier here, these four diodes, is then fed into what I believe is the bulk cap for the high voltage uh, DC, rectified DC. This, this just collects it and 
this that would be considered the boost stage of an inverter. So what we're looking at here is the component, the first stage of a DC to AC inverter. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, I'm not 100%, but I believe that's a high voltage DC right here, stored in that cap. And so that would be a very dangerous cap. And as far as the cap, it's uh, 250 volts, 220 farad. Yeah, so 250 volts, obviously, yes, that is the, the bolt cap. As far as what kind of cap is it? 105 degrees, low ESR. I uh, don't know who makes it. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's hard to read that. I don't, I don't know what that brand is, COP, but it's not Capscon or um, it's not a Japanese capacitor. Um, so that would be the first part of the boost stage. And then once you have the high voltage DC, you can use uh, MOSFETs, I believe it's these here, to basically make your pure sine wave. This is a pure sine wave inverter. And I don't know how well this is going to show up, but right here you have a little gem, which is essentially a, a daughter board. It's a little tiny circuit board right here, and it's soldered at right angle to the main board. I believe that's called a daughter board. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... And what this is, this is the computer chips and microprocessors, I believe, that control the pure sine wave inverter. Now, to make a pure sine wave inverter, you need some brain power. And that's why you have these extra chips here. There's an LED here to show it's functioning. There's a crystal. I'm assuming that's to give the microcontroller timing. That probably is the microcontroller. Oh, boy, the footage is very blurry. Well, I don't know how much I can do about that. Let's try starting over. Okay, you can see it right there. It's actually better far away. That's the microprocessor, I believe, that handles all the uh, functions. And there's a lot of little f uh, components on there, and, you know, they, it's hard to tell what they are, and you have to be a real guru to understand this stuff. There's a model number, revision number on there. A1, so this is probably an earlier revision. And there's different chips on there. So that controls the pure sine wave inverter. As far as I know, that's what that would be. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. There's a good view of it. About 75% of it anyway. And those two little chips there, IDR, I don't know, I really can't see very well. Yeah, you could look those up if you wanted to. It's very hard to see with this type of footage here. And you can see the components are fairly clean. There's even a shine on the circuit board. So, you know, this thing is, I've seen worse. I have other ones of these and the circuit board is not this good looking. In fact, one of them is just terrible and corroded. I had one of them that had water get into it. So, there we go. Now, I don't know what every component is on this board, and I haven't identified everything. Uh, this is a uh, inductor, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I have not actually checked to see exactly, and I don't claim to know everything. So, But one thing you want to do with these is make sure they're not loose. This one here has been properly glued down, as you can see. It has some black goo on there. It's nice and tight. You don't want that rattling around. In fact, you don't want anything rattling around here. So you can always check for that. That can cause a unit to stop working. And if you look in here, there's there's all kind of components. But, I, you know, this here, I'm going to try to use the pin that I'm tapping. That's another daughter board. And I believe this is the microprocessor or controller for the entire solar generator. And that there is a little piezoelectric speaker, I think. Is that a speaker? I don't think so. No, that's not a speaker. I don't think that's a speaker unless they've covered it in tape. So I don't know what that is. Um, this may not have a beeper in it. That's what I thought it was. I don't think that's what that is. So I don't know what that is. But I think that this board is what controls the whole unit. But I'm just guessing, and I don't know for sure. And here you have a inductor. And I believe this is part of the charge controller in the unit. Now the charge controller is spread all over here. And probably two or more of these MOSFETs here are part of the charge controller. I believe it's MPPT, Maximum PowerPoint Tracking. It does act like it, although it does act strange sometimes. So either they're trying to imitate an MPPT by only pulling the solar panel voltage down. You know, they could guess and say if it's around 20 volts, pull it down to 16. If it's 40-some volts, then pull it down to around 30. It could be something like that or an actual Maximum PowerPoint Tracking controller. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But that is, I believe that is an inductor for the charge controller. And there's different components here. You, realize, you have to realize there's different sections of the board. And this part here can be used to charge the battery through AC. But then I believe some of these components are shared with the pure sine wave output as well. I suspect they are. 
here is the output for the AC. So that's a dangerous plug there. That could become live and that would, they'd have, there'd be 120 volts AC right there coming out of there. This is the solar input right here. So that's DC input from the solar panels. And there's a lot of components on here. I mean, you really could go on all day. Um, that's probably a, a jumper or a shunt. They could be using that as a shunt. Who knows if that's really a real shunt. It could just be a piece of wire. It's hard to make a shunt. Shunts are for measuring current. And it's hard to make a real shunt with a piece of wire. But who knows what that is. And here you have some opto-isolators. This board is covered with opto-isolators. 95% certain that's what those are. I haven't looked them up. But they're useful for measuring uh, voltages and getting feedback from other parts of a circuit that you don't you don't want an actual electrical connection to. These completely are galvanically isolated on both sides. And what it is is basically a photosensitive element and an LED or something on the other side. And that way you can get a, a signal across without actually making electrical contact. So I'm not going to go on too long. This video it would take hours. But you want to look at all the stuff and make sure that there's nothing burned out. It's very common to find components burned out. But this board is actually in really good shape. I'm not at all disappointed in it. And I I paid not a whole lot of money for this solar generator. So I'm not, I mean, I profited on the deal. I really did. You know, I could have also lost out. So that's what's in here. And the footage doesn't look too bad. Now these, uh, you'll notice some slots cut in the board. And what those are, those are, I guess you'd call them spark gaps. And that's to separate high voltage from lower potential or lower voltage sections of the circuit. It's for safety. And there's actually quite a few slots cut in the board there, you can see. And over here you have some very high DC voltage. And DC, high DC voltage is known for jumping the gap, so to speak. Well, not to, so to speak, but literally. So you can use things like that to help prevent um, arcing. So, actually there's only two slots cut in the board. Oh no, there's three. So there's one there. There's three of them. And you can see some of the some of the connection points are labeled uh, with a silk screen and but who knows what those are. You have yeah, I, I don't know. I believe those go to the display. Yeah, those go to the display. And who who knows what those mean? LED TYI. I don't know what those mean. I wish I did. Uh, there's a lot of cryptic stuff, and you, you just have to figure it out. I'm not I'm not sure. Over here, we have the fan control. Now I've torn off by accident one of the plugs. This one here wasn't torn off, this one here was. This is the two fan control. There's a fan control circuit here, and I don't know exactly how it works, but I don't know if it's just PWMs or what. But that's what that is. And you see there's some opto-isos there, which I'm just gonna guess monitor the fans, but I'm not sure. Okay, and now I'm gonna turn it around 180 degrees now you can get a better view. This is the view I'm used to looking at. And here you can see all the MOSFETs and diodes for the inverter. The MOSFETs for the, I believe it's the charge controller. And there's possibly some other MOSFETs to do other things and I don't know for sure. Now this is, I'm having a hard time actually getting any clear footage here of this. If you see those metal bars with a screw going through, those are clamps and they are, there's a screw on the other side of the heat sink going all the way through into that clamp. And what that does is that forces the MOSFET up against the heat sink and holds it there. This is another place you need to check, even in a brand new piece of electronics, because a lot of times those little clamps, those metal bars will be bent because they over tighten them. And that could potentially cause one of the MOSFETs to rotate and not make good connections with this heat sink. And that is a bad thing because the MOSFET could overheat. So that's something to look at. And of course, this one here is actually partially moved away from the heatsink. It's hard to show, but I showed it earlier. And actually the same problem here, potentially, right here. This one here, it's hard to see, but this one is rotated away. Now, maybe because it's over tightened or, or it could just be this uh, rubber boot has uh, twisted a little bit. It could just be an illusion. I can't actually see the MOSFET. Hopefully it's okay though. And I don't intend to run this unit hard, so I'm not too concerned. So I think that's enough about the main board. It's obviously not in terrible shape. And there's various things on here you could probe with a multimeter. But um, I know that this board is mostly functional. And now the, the inverter does need to be repaired. And one of the MOSFETs has been cut out. 
you can't see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. Anyway, uh, if you suspect a MOSFET is damaged and short it out, you can just cut the legs on it, and it's quicker than desoldering it, and it'd be a quick way to test. So that's the first look at the motherboard or main board, whatever you want to call it, and the different components, the different areas of it. And everything here is mixed together. So this is really hard to troubleshoot. If you're an electronics novice, and I, I don't consider myself to be a pro, this is very confusing. Everything is crammed together. It's a multifunctional board. I believe it can even change its function based on how things are hooked up. And that makes it even harder to troubleshoot. And a lot of the components here are the size of the head of a pin or smaller. And it's just so hard. I don't have a microscope. You normally would need a microscope. I mean, look at this stuff here. You know, you... No, it's not going to focus. Oh, it's kind of focused. You really need a microscope to look at this stuff. It's so tiny. Some of the components are smaller than the head of a pin. You just can't see. And this can be really hard on your eyes. And there's so much going on there. So, yeah, welcome to the world of electronics. It's not, it's not supposed to be easy. They don't even pretend. But at least you can see some of the main parts. So I'm not here to give you a pros, a pro uh, electronics troubleshooting uh, tutorial. I'm just here to give you some rough layman's ideas of how you could troubleshoot a board like this. And if it just so happens the board you have is not terribly damaged, there's a good chance you would be able to identify the fault pretty quickly in the first 10 to 20 minutes and solve it and get yourself a functioning piece of equipment or maybe half functioning and still get some return on your investment. So that's the first part of the look at the main board.